Hey guys, Chris here, Warcraft 24-7, and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about custom price source. That's right, you guys have wanted to know how to set up custom prices, custom sources for your auctions, and we're going to go through that today. Alright, so first off, let's uh, let's pop into TSM. Alright, uh, we're going to go to settings, and you're going to go to custom sources. So we're on the left-hand side. You can see I already got these set up for you guys. And we're going to zoom in a little bit so you guys will be able to see them a little better. All right, I want to show you guys what we have set up here. Uh, these are basically the, the basis of what we're going to use to post auctions uh, at the minimum price on our auction house. And I'm going to go through these and explain these to you really simple. And these guys are really simple to set up. It's just uh, you... Click the box that says add new custom source, and with that you're able to give it a name. Of course, all the name has to be uh, lowercase, and then a, a simple string that can be as simple as a math string. It can use uh, other price sources in the callouts as we have done here uh, and different things, and we're going we're gonna to go through that and, and talk about it. So here we go. First thing we have set up is auction house cut, AH cut. That is the minimum buyout that, that the item is, the minimum price the item is on the auction house times the 5% cut that the auction house is going to take. Now, all these things we're talking about right now all have to do with the minimum price. This has nothing to do with our maximum price. This has nothing to do with our normal price. These sources are all going to be used for our minimum price. So we're going to take DB minimum buyout times 5%. That's what the auction house is going to take if we sell an item. The next item is our deposit. That is what it's going to cost us to post this item. That is simply the vendor sell price times 60%. 60% is the 48 hour deposit cost based on the vendor sell price. They take 60% of that and that is what it costs you to, to post that item for 48 hours. Of course, if you want to post for 12 hours or 24 hours, those prices will be less. But as a basis, we want to use the 48 hours, the max price, as our default. All right. So the next item is expires. That's how many times this item has been posted and expired on the auction house. That is simply a built-in TSM function called num expires. So all you have to do is make your price source, give it a name, and call in the string num expires. The, the minimum profit is the next one we're looking at. This is the minimum profit that I've decided that I want to make off each item. Now, this is very simple. If we want to edit this item, uh, hopefully it'll show up in the right spot, which it won't because um, I'm zoomed in, but let's, uh, let's turn the zoom off and I can show you guys. Um, so we're going to go minimal profit, we're going to go to edit that. All we have to do is simply change this 25 gold. We can change this to 15 gold. We can change this to 50 gold. We can change this to 5,000 gold. Whatever we want it to be. Uh, we can use a, a completely different string in there. We can use all kinds of, of different uh, variables, whatever we want to use. But that is our minimum price that we want to use that's the profit we want to make we want to make 25 gold we're not going to post items if they're not going to make us at least 25 gold we're not going to waste the time posting them uh, it's not worth the time posting five or six hundred items that aren't going to make you uh you know one or two gold a piece it's, it's just not it's a time management thing all right and now we're getting into some some stuff that's a little more complex operating costs this is basically what it costs you to post an item on the auction house Basically, you have to take your vendor sell price, which is a built-in built -in function of TSM. You just type in vendor sell, plus the deposit, which we've already established is 60% of the vendor sell price. We've already established that in a previous price source that we've made, plus the deposit times the number of expires. Okay? Now, I have in here num expires. We could easily put that in as expires. The, the price source we made, but I, I have it as num expires. Um, that way I have I have the 
built-in function for the operation, but I also have the one that I can show as a tool tip, and I'll show you about the tool tips here in a minute. So, vendor sale price plus deposit plus deposit times num expires that way every time we post this item that num expires goes up so every time we post the item it has cost us more and more every posting we lose a deposit so we have to factor in that deposit back in to our operating costs okay then we get into our profit this is what we actually want to make you know this is what we're actually going to make if we sell the item so basically what it is, is DB minimum buyout. Okay, we got the minimum buyout. That's that's a built-in function. That's a DB minimum buyout. That is what is posted at right now on the auction house, lowest possible price. We need to subtract our operating costs that we've already figured out. And then we need to subtract our auction house cut, the 5% they're going to take if the item sells. But we need to add back in the base deposit because we're going to get that back if the item sells we get our deposit back so we always need to add in that that last deposit back in that's if it sells um, so that gives us our profit now so we got all those sources set up okay what um what are we using them for well first off we want to go to tooltip if we go into tooltip settings at the top you can turn all those on over here on the left you can see your auction house cut. You can see your, let's see if it'll zoom into the right spot. Yeah. All right. So you can see, let's see, groups and operations, values. So you can see right here under custom sources, I have auction house cut, deposit, number of expiries, minimum profit, operating cost, profit. So I can show all those on the tool tip. So what that means is when I look at when I look at an item, this dingy plate belt, for example, I can see that the auction house cut is going to be five gold because it, the minimum buyout is a hundred. So the auction house cut is going to be five gold. The deposit is going to be five silver, 41 copper. My minimum profit, 25 gold. You don't have to show that minimum profit on here. I'm doing that for an example. Um, you don't have to show that at all. But we got that on there. Um, also have operating costs that's going to show us the operating cost of that you know we've, we're up to 14 silver 42 copper so every time we post that that operating cost is going to go up and then our profit at a minimum buyout of 100 gold right now if we post this item our profit which remember is our Minimum price minus our auction house cut, which is five gold, minus our operating expense plus our deposit back. We're going to be making a profit of 94 gold, 91 silver. Okay, so why is that? Why is it important to collect all that data and show all that? One, you need to know if you're making money or not when you're posting an item. But two, what we're going to do, let me pop open TSM again, and we're going to go into operations. We're going to go to auction the operation. All right, let me see if I can get this. The zoom is going to work for us again. Uh, 48 hours, so well, we got to post that. Okay. Uh, let's see. May have to, may have to do a little moving around here. Let's see. We're going to go. There we go. All right, here's where we want to be. This is posting price. This is where this is where it comes into into play that we have put all those those custom sources in into work. So what we're going to do our minimum price. Remember all this all this had to do with our minimum price of posting. All right? We're going to say that if we're going to use the if statement, it's it's if greater than. So IFGT so we're going to say that if our profit, that's the 94 gold, is greater than our minimum profit, that's the 25 gold we set up. So if, if our profit number is greater than our minimum profit, so yes, we're going to make at least that minimum profit, then we're going to post this item at the DB minimum buyout. If it is not, 
if for some reason our profit is less than the minimum profit, so say that this item is only selling for like five gold, all right? So five gold is not going to make our minimum profit, so that, that statement is going to be false because our profit is going to be less than our minimum profit. It's not going to post this item at all. It's going to skip it. It's not going to be posted, all right? That way, we're only posting items that are going to sell for a minimum profit of 25 gold. Of course, easy enough, you go back into custom sources, you can change this minimum profit to 5 gold, 50 gold, 500 gold, whatever you want it to be. But that profit has to be more than the minimum profit before it's going to post at that minimum buyout price. Okay? Now, here's the other place we use this. All right? Say we're sell, so we got these items that don't post. We want to go into vendor operations and our vendor trash. You guys have, have been with me before. You know vendor trash is our. Uh, we've set that up. We've talked about that vendoring operations uh, a lot of times. But here in vendor trash, under the sell operation, all right, we're going to sell the market value of the item is profit. That's that 94 gold we got. The item posted 100 minus all that stuff. Our market value is the 94 gold. That's the profit we're going to make on that item. The max market value is our minimum profit. This works the exact same way um, as vendor trash. We set that 25 gold profit that we want to make. If it evaluates the profit, off that item through our custom sources and it is less than the, the 25 gold, it's going to vendor this item as trash. That way we don't have to, we don't have to keep a bunch of items in our bag as we go through and we vendor our trash items, it's gonna go ahead and, and get rid of those. And you can set this up on a per group. So, I mean, you can set this up on, you know, just your gray transmog items or just your white transmog items. The the beauty of doing it with custom sources is you can set it up in the operations and you can assign that just to the groups you want um, that way you're say you got and you farm uh, the firelands you end up with a whole bunch of gray items that sell for five to ten gold but you have like 50 of them and there's no sense posting them because they're not going to sell the market's flooded with them you know that you know it's not over that threshold of 25 gold Let's just go ahead and vendor those items as trash. You That way you don't have to add them. You don't have to add them to the vendor trash file. You can keep them in your gray transmog file. But this way, using the custom price sources, it will go ahead and vendor them as trash being in the transmog file. So if by chance the price spikes on the auction house and all of a sudden you have huge you know have huge profit potential um it's gonna it'll stop selling those items so you'll be able to post them on the auction house it's just a, a nice clear easy way to do custom price sourcing that lets you um be able to go through set up everything you want easy as pie so it's super simple i will have those functions uh, in the description below, I will have those set up so you guys will have those uh, those price sources that we've set up in the video today. I'll have those in there. If you guys haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, join the Discord, join the Twitch, watch us as we live stream. We talk about all this stuff all the time. We talk about farms, we talk about auctioning, we talk about gold making in general. We just go out and have a good time. Join us on stream. We'd love to chat with you. We'd love to answer questions. We'd love to help you guys out all we can. This is Chris, Warcraft 24-7, saying thank you very much for joining in and watching us. If you've made it this far, please hit that subscribe button. Don't let another video get made that you miss out on because there's gold on the table. This is Chris, signing off.